Concussion is common enough that we all know someone who's had one. Most of these people eventually recover on their own within about a month of the injury. But a large percentage are still disabled months after with little hope of ever getting back to normal. These are the patients that are labeled with post-concussion syndrome. The people who do recover demonstrate a fundamental property of the brain, that it has the capacity to self-repair. This capacity, known as neuroplasticity, is in everyone, including the people with PCS. Much like a muscle, the brain has the capacity to change and adapt in response to the specific demands that are placed upon it. The more a specific nerve pathway is used or activated, the more new connections between cells in that pathway are created. The pathway then becomes more efficient and easier to fire. So the question is, how do you turn that capacity into action to recover from your injury? Well, what if you could direct that plasticity into the specific areas of the brain that needed it the most? Well, that is functional neurology, driving neuroplasticity in specifically targeted pathways and neuronal pools in the brain. State-of-the-art imaging techniques can show the neural pathways that connect all the regions of the brain, allowing them to work effectively together. We can think of each of these pathways as a series of nerve cells connected end-to-end -end and running parallel to each other, connecting one part of the brain to another. During an impact or an abrupt movement of the head, the brain sloshes back and forth and may even twist within the skull. The delicate fibrous pathways can be torn in the areas subjected to the most force. Depending on which areas of the brain are affected, different functions may be impaired. Typically, with injury to the outer layers of the brain known as the cortex, we will see impairments of higher functions like perception, thought, planning, and memory. With rotational impacts common in concussion, twisting forces can create injuries lower down in the brainstem and cerebellum. Injuries in these areas commonly lead to vision problems, dizziness or balance issues, as well as autonomic dysfunction like nausea or rapid heart rate. When the fibers within a pathway are broken, downstream function dependent on that pathway will be impaired or lost. As long as there's still a remnant of that pathway intact, then some function, however limited, will still be present. Using a functional neurological examination, as well as diagnostic testing, the injured pathways and neuronal pools in the brain can be identified. Once we know where the lesions are, a specific program of gentle stimulations and brain-based exercises targeting the injured pathways can be prescribed. By gently firing the injured pathway and supporting it metabolically, Neuroplastic new connections are encouraged and downstream function can be restored. It is important to understand that the remnant was also stressed by the initial forces of the injury and may be in a weakened state. For this reason, it is critical to proceed slowly and carefully with the activations so as not to exceed the capacity of the damaged pathway. A trained functional neurologist will be able to monitor the patient's response during the stimulation, stopping the activity before the point of fatigue is reached. So the essential ingredients of a successful recovery are number one, some remnant of the damaged pathway or structure must be available to work with. Number two, specific and careful activation of that pathway has to be performed to drive the formation of new connections. Number three, the injured pathway must be supported metabolically to ensure that it has the adequate fuel, oxygen, and building blocks necessary to build the new connections. Number four, since all injuries will create inflammation, it is necessary to minimize its damaging effects by reducing the inflammatory response as much as possible. This means modifying the diet to remove triggers of inflammation, as well as supplementation to support immune regulation. However, it's important to understand that this system is not as good as new. Even with the improved function, there is still less of the original pathway so it's very susceptible to future injuries. This is why multiple concussions tend to add up, with the effects of each new concussion tending to be worse than the last. Once a pathway is completely severed, it can't be recovered. So, assuming you do recover from this concussion, it's very important to not place yourself at risk for another head injury. The next one could potentially be catastrophic.
While every case is different, as a general overview, a typical case will involve a three-month treatment period with twice-weekly office visits. Two-week intensive programs using multiple visits per day are also available for long-distance patients or those with urgent recovery deadlines. During those visits, specific brain-based exercises and stimulations are given and modified specific to the patient's lesions in progress. At the end of each session, home exercises are given to be performed between visits. To reduce inflammation and to support the growth of new connections, supplementation and dietary modifications are recommended specific to each case. Throughout the treatment process, periodic re-examinations are done to monitor response and to guide further treatment. This approach allows patients to regain control and hope for their future by actively participating in their own recovery. Thank you.